Let's go ahead and start cycling this. Welcome to Land of House, I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It's a water pump that needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing and falling water. Basically, for every one foot of water that falls into this pump, it can lift seven feet out. So if you had 10 feet of drop coming in, it would run uh, 70 feet up in the air. Pretty impressive. So you see the title of the video, you see the thumbnail. I'm gonna be reinstalling my one inch ram pump to get it ready for this next season. It is kind of a mess because I was testing out some what happens in the winter time to a ram pump videos and I let things uh, bust and freeze and all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into reinstalling my one inch ram pump. Let me walk you through the system so you can see the state of my ram pump. So here it is, a one inch ram pump. You can see we had a bit of a flood and a bunch of sticks and leaves have piled up against it. So the drive pipe, which brings water to the pump, froze and busted right here. That's a one inch pipe, so we gotta do some repairs on that. I was also doing some testing with a half inch pump up here. So we'll remove all of this half inch pipe and get this system going again. This right here is a silt bucket, which means Basically, water comes in here and uh, leaves some of the silt behind, as you can see down there in the bottom. We need to drain all of that out. We'll have to unclog the drive pipe here. I think it's got some stuff in there. This right here is called a supply line, and it brings water from the source to this bucket. So looks like it's flowing pretty good. We may need to just clean out a little bit up here to get this going. I've got some new boots so I can muck around in the creek and not wear those sandals. It's always nice. Let's see how our source is doing. Not too bad, a little bit clogged. I might pull some of those leaves out real quick. The source is actually doing pretty good considering the number of floods we've had recently. So I may just pull this one big rock right here and see if I can get things unclogged a little bit. It's not bad though. You can see just how much silt I have in my creek here. Okay, to be honest, that's good enough. Let's just cover that back up and go down to the next spot. I'm gonna be doing some testing on intakes this year. I have two different designs that I think will be uh, beneficial. And so we'll be working with that. I'm also going to be installing a bigger bucket. Instead of this five gallon, I'm gonna do a 55 gallon so that I can run the uh, Papa pump off of that. But the next intake's gonna be way up around the corner where there's a little waterfall. I think it should be a very interesting intake idea. So, back down here at the bucket. Hopefully we've got enough flow. Let me take this one out. So yeah, that right there should be more than enough to run the half inch ram pump. So basically the water comes in right here from the source, overflows out right here and is good to go. I'll go ahead and pull this out for a moment. Just let it go over here to the flume. And then, I'm not exactly sure why, but it looks like the uh, drive pipe here, oh, I know why, I capped it. So let's go ahead and drain this water so we can, so there's a cap on there. So that's gonna, empty out that drive pipe. That definitely would explain why it wasn't flowing. I've got a pipe up under here that I can remove and then I can drain the silt out of the bottom here. Just got the bucket pretty well cleaned out. I think that should be good enough for at least getting us started this year. So now we can say that the intake is clean and good. Comes down here to the bucket. So now we need to go work on this busted drive pipe. So I've got approximately 50 foot of inch uh, pipe here and uh, it drops somewhere around uh, seven foot total down to the pump. So let's work on this broken piece right here. As you're watching this video, keep in mind that I have four different sizes of ram pumps available at landahouse.com, Amazon, and eBay. Links in the description down below. 
So currently you can see my pump is kind of in the way down there where the water is just always bringing debris up. So I think I'm gonna cut a little bit further up here, maybe about right here. And that way I can bring the whole pump up a bit and get it out of the creek so that uh, when it floods, it doesn't pile up against the pump. So let's cut back a bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to move this ram pump up a bit because it's been kind of in the way. Well, it's been in the creek and it gets kind of uh, washed out whenever it rains hard. All right, so if you scoot back over there just a little bit, thank you. Just because I'm gonna be moving this up, I don't wanna hit you. Yeah. Uh, there's fine. Okay, I've cleaned my pipes off a bit here so I can add this coupling and hopefully get this back together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the ram pump to the drive pipe, just using the union. I'm using some of this metal plumber's strap to tie down the pump to this board back here because the ram pump needs to be locked down or else it will uh, kind of hammer itself loose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this attached. I now have the drive pipe connected, it comes down here and brings the pump up and out of the creek because it was right here for the past five years or so. So now we'll have it up here, hopefully doing a little bit better as far as not catching all this debris. It also brings the delivery pipe up out of the water, which is a good thing. So speaking of delivery pipes, my neighbor was pulling some trees out of the woods for firewood and he pulled out some of my delivery going uphill. So let's take a walk up there and look at that while we wait on the drive pipe over here to finish curing. The pump is right there. The delivery pipe circles around over here and you can see it's not attached to anything right here. And that's because my neighbor pulled the pipe out of the woods and it's sitting right over here. Let's go over there and see if we can fix it up. Here's the coil of delivery pipe. This is three quarter inch and it's supposed to come out of the woods right here, go up under my little bridge. And then there's actually a culvert right here, which is supposed to go up under. So what we're gonna have to do is go over here and pull out this uh, side over here, reattach the pipe and then push it back through again. So let's go ahead and start working on that process. I've got to reconnect this delivery pipe right here and then get it stuck back under this culvert. I'm gonna pull this this way and then we're gonna stick it down in the pipe. And hopefully we're gonna make it all the way through to the other side without hitting any snags. What snags? Like, uh, in the middle of this culvert, there's a connector that puts two pieces together and it might catch the pipe and prevent it from going in. Looks like we had success. Got this out of here. Now that all the repairs are finally done, it's time to start this ram pump. So let's walk back up here to the silt bucket and get the water flow back into it. There we go. This one inch ram pump is gonna need somewhere around five to six gallons per minute to operate. And so I think we've got that here at this flow rate. If not, we'll have to go up there and clean out some more 
of that input. So, but for now, let's go ahead and close this back up. We'll go down here and see how this is progressing. Now the ram pump has to have no air in the drive pipe to operate. And so you can see down here, that air is being expelled from the drive pipe. When it's done, it's gonna slam closed. Now there may, may still be just a little bit of air in there, which you have to open that to purge out. But what's happening right now is water from this height right up here, about seven feet up, flowing down. It's bypassing the pump, going into the delivery pipe, and it will go up the hill until it matches that seven foot. And then we're gonna be cycling the pump from that position to get it to uh, push forward. So how the ram pump works is water flows down and slams the waste valve. This is the waste valve right here. When that happens, a pressure wave is sent back up the pipe and then also into the secondary valve. And that is going to accumulate into this pressure tank right here. And then from there, the water is sent uphill. So meanwhile, the pressure wave that's sent back that way uh, relieves this pressure here and sends another wave back to close it again. So it's constantly clicking this back and forth. So anyway, let's go ahead and start cycling this. There may still be a little bit of air in the line. Pressing this valve can take a very long time. And the reason for that is that back pressure has to be built into the delivery pipe. So for example, if I just go ahead and close this off and it has unlimited back pressure, it will start to cycle a lot quicker. Also, you'll start seeing water build up here in the tank. There we go. So see how quickly that started? It's because we had unlimited back pressure. But as soon as I open that, it's going to stop because all this water is being sent up that pipe and filling it up. So it's gonna take me probably 50 times or more of clicking this before it is, uh, has filled up that pipe enough to get this running on its own. Okay, I noticed that it's starting to try to cycle on its own. So it's getting pretty close here to uh, having enough back pressure or water in the delivery pipe. Sometimes it'll start cycling on its own and you think it's good and it needs a couple more pushes. So I'm gonna hang out here for just a moment. You can see how much water is still going up in that delivery pipe with each cycle. One good sign is that I have this much water coming out of the waste valve and still have this much overflow. Let's go up here to the bucket and check to see how we're doing. We always wanna have a little bit more overflow than we do uh, coming out of the pump. For a reference point where the delivery pipe is traveling, we've already seen that it went up under the road, which is right here. It came over to this side, comes up the hill, goes through a culvert right here. Now you'll notice there are two pipes at this point, and that's because I've also got a pipe that goes over to my little garden spot over here. But let's walk up the hill and see if the water has made it to the top yet. As you're traveling up the delivery pipe, you can oftentimes tap on the pipe and hear the difference between full and not full. So here, this one's empty because it's coming back down the hill. Let me bring this mic closer so you can hear it. Versus this. So empty, full. So let's go ahead and move on up here and see if the water is coming out at the top. For reference, I was just standing right down here and now I'm up here almost to the top and we've actually beat the water up here. So empty right there. Okay, it's full right around here. And it's empty right here. So let me go ahead and show you up here before the water starts coming out. 
This is where my previous water tower was. It was three 55 gallon drums. But check this out. Up here on the hill is my new water tower, which you will see in an upcoming video. It's gonna be 660 gallons of water. The water has just reached the top. And the flow is great. That right there is probably somewhere around a quarter gallon to a half gallon a minute. Nice. So it will easily continue uphill the extra 10 feet or more that will make it up to the off-grid water tower. So basically from here, the water can go into that giant tank and there will be another one soon. And then the water will come back down in the other pipe and then I can take it back down to the garden with uh, 15 to 16 PSI. And that concludes the 2022 Ram Pump Startup video. I hope you've learned something from this. Basically, I'm pumping creek water with seven foot of drop to about 40 foot up my hill. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Seth with Land of House, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.